Hello photographers, thank you for joining us. We're here today in my tiny house. Uh, I live in a tiny house, but I'm also a professional photographer. And today we're going to take a look at the NRL RT90C tripod. This is a budget priced tripod, a little less than $300, that I've been using for the last three months. It is actually pretty comparable to some of the really expensive ones. So let's get to the review and see how it shapes up. Okay, we're back. So in the package that you get with the 90C, you get a tripod, of course. You get a tripod bag, which is uh, not bad actually. It is padded. Uh, it will protect the tripod. It has a pouch in order to put various accessories in and things like that. But to me, it's wasted. I don't use a tripod bag. So, uh, for some of you, this is going to be really valuable. But for me, it was just extra, but it came with the tripod. Also included along with the tripod is a number of plates. There's the normal top plate, which is flat, and it fits on top of the tripod like you see here, and it is removable. So you can take it out. On the bottom of this flat plate is a hook that you can hang your camera bag or some other weight to the bottom of the hook in order to stabilize your tripod, say on a windy day or something like that. And also with this tripod, we get a leveling base. And this leveling base goes into the same area that the flathead comes out of. And you can see it's very easy to change in and out. There is a bubble level on the top right here. And then, of course, the legs are adjustable. They each have these tabs on them, and you can adjust them out to one angle like that, or you can adjust them even more radically out to an angle like that, almost flat on the ground. The legs operate easily. You just twist and pull, and then you twist this back again. It is very sturdy. Once you adjust the legs, there's no slipping, there's no sliding. It's very strong. The one thing I did notice is it takes almost a full turn in order to be able to adjust these. Uh, those of you that have a Gidzu tripod, you know that they have an advanced system that takes just like a quarter turn or so and you're able to adjust the legs. Let's move this up a little bit to where we have it in our sight line. We'll just do an approximate thing there. Okay. Now you can see it as we have it here. Of course, it's not completely level. We can just adjust the legs one after the other in order to make it level. Uh, that looks pretty close, but not quite. Okay, well it doesn't have to be perfect because we do have the, the leveling base here in order to adjust it. Also included in the tripod are replacement feet that have a point on them. And these are excellent when you're working in a situation like you're working on an icy lake or something like that and you want the tripod to not skate around. I've used it a couple of times this winter and it came in very handy. Let's take a look at how thick the legs are. We've got a set of calipers here. And the upper legs come in. Turn this on. Uh, 
roughly 41, 41 millimeters, or for those of you who prefer inches, about 1.64 inches for the top leg. The middle leg, about 1.45 inches, or 37 millimeters. And then let's go to the second leg down is at 32.5 kilometers and the bottom leg at 29 kilometers. Uh, I bet if you would compare that to any other professional heavy-duty tripod made for 35 millimeter equipment you would find that this comes in as sturdy or more sturdy than any of them. The construction is carbon fiber. It does have these uh, pads here to uh, help you on cold days so that you're not freezing uh, when you're holding on to the carbon fiber. I find them to be not thick enough to really do very much good. But that's okay because I usually have something like a lens coat, leg covers on them uh, in order to protect my tripod. Now let's mount a tripod head on top of here. I've got a Monfrotto head and uh, just screws right into the top. Okay, so as you can see, it makes a very efficient tripod, and you're able to level the top by using the leveling head, and I've got a bubble level here on the head, so I just center that bubble level so that it's right in the middle of the bubble, and now we're ready to go. So let's see how this looks when we actually put a lens on top of it. I tend to use my Monfrotto head turned around like this and I've done some adaptations to this head in order to convert it to Arca Swiss, make it more convenient for long lenses. This is a 600 millimeter F4 Canon lens. There you go. You can see how sturdy the tripod looks. We have an adjustment on the bottom right here back next to me for panning back and forth. And then we have adjustment over here on the side for tilting up and down. The Manfrotto head also has tension adjustments on the top and bottom, but this is not really uh, an evaluation of the Manfrotto head. So let's let that uh, sit how, how it is right now for, for now. The tripod will go up to a height of about 60 inches from the top plate to the ground and it will go down to within about 24 inches of the ground. It doesn't go too close to the ground because of this leveling base that prevents it from going all the way close to the ground, but if you want to get closer to the ground, just change to the flat top base, and then you will get within a couple inches of the ground. Collapse down, it will travel in an average suitcase if you're going to do any traveling. The way that I usually travel with my tripod is to connect it onto the side of my camera bag. So let's see how that works. I frequently have my camera bag in the car and I also 
on occasion have to go hiking into the woods after animals and whatnot and so it's nice to have your camera bag and your tripod all conveniently in one package. I use a backpack type camera bag, it's a think tank and it has a provision here on the side for sticking the tripod into a, a sleeve and then I have these Velcro uh, straps that I can run around the camera or around the tripod and attach and this keeps it sturdy. When I had broken my leg these straps were on the side of the boot that they had given me and when I no longer needed the boot I repurposed the straps for my camera case. There. So there you can see the tripod is mounted firmly on the side of the camera case. When you put your 600 millimeter lens in this side of the camera case and your tripod is over here, the weight is almost equivalently balanced because the 600 millimeter lens is pretty heavy. Uh, this carries well on your back. Of course, it will snag a couple of limbs and trees as you walk by things, but this makes it very convenient to walk a relatively long distance and then be able to get your tripod and your lens out and to be able to shoot. Of course if I think that I'm going to be photographing some animals as I'm walking I will carry the tripod over my shoulder with the lens and the camera attached to it. That about covers the review of the NRL RT-90C. There's more information comparing the NRL RT-90C to other budget tripods. Uh, the other bi budget tripods are from $600 or so down to the price of this. Most of them are much more expensive and I also compared this tripod to the Gitzu Series 5 line of tripods and the really right stuff line of tripods. Those two are the Cadillac models of tripods that professional photographers use. Uh, even if you own one of those tripods this is a good backup tripod for use such as in hazardous environments or something like that because even if this gets damaged the cost of this is only $300 compared to the cost of a Gidzu tripod that starts out at roughly a thousand dollars, maybe eleven hundred dollars, not including the leveling head and so on. Uh, same thing for the really right stuff. I think it starts out at about eleven or twelve hundred dollars. Add a leveling head into it and you're up over fourteen hundred dollars. So very quickly the price of a RRS tripod gets up there pretty high as well as the Gidzu tripod Whereas this one, for all of the items combined, including the carrying case and the, the feet and the interchangeable heads and everything like that, is priced at $297. I suspect that the company has things marked at a lower price right now in order to get their feet on the ground, but soon after things really start to sell, you'll see the prices jump up into the six to $700 range. I saw this happen with the Fizo tripod when it first came out. The first Fizo tripod I purchased was in the three to four hundred dollar range and now they're up in the six hundred dollar range because people have gotten to know them and trust them. If you have any questions please leave them in the comments. If you would like to read more about this tripod go to my website which is Moose Henderson blog slash tripod in order to get to the actual review of this tripod. I thank you for joining us and I look forward to seeing you again next time. If you found this content to be helpful, please press the like button, 
and also subscribe if you wish. I wish you all a good day, and thank you so much.